the wake world. My name is Lola because I am the key of delights. And the other Virgo Mundi children in my dream call me Lolo Daydream. When I'm awake, you see, I know that I'm dreaming. So they must be very silly children. Now, don't you think? There are people in the dream, too, who are quite grown up and horrid. But the really important thing is the wake-up person. There's only one for Adonai. There c- never could be uh, anyone like him. Uh, I call him my fairy prince. He rides a uh, horse with beautiful wings like a swan and sometimes a strange creature like a pegasus, <laughs> lion, or bull with a woman's face or breasts. And she has an unfathomable sphinx eyes. My fairy prince is a dark boy, very comely. I think that everyone must love visa 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 by him, and yet everyone is afraid. He looks through one just as if one had no clothes on in the garden of God, and he had made one, and one could do nothing except in the mirror of his mind. He never laughs or frowns or smiles, because whatever he sees, he sees what is beyond as well, and so nothing ever happens. His mouth is redder than any roses you ever saw. I wake up quite when we kiss each other, and there is no dream any more. But when it is not trembling on mine, I see kisses on his lips, as if he were kissing someone one could not see. Now you must know that my fairy prince is my lover, and one day he will come for good and ride away with me and marry me. I shan't tell you his name, because it is too beautiful. It's a great secret between us. When we were engaged, he gave me such a beautiful ring. It was like this. First there was a sigilla, Anuli was his shield, which had a sun on it and some roses, all on a kind of bar, and one cognonymous. There was a terrible number written on it. Then there was a, a bank of soft roses, 666, with the sun shining on it, and above there was a red rose and a golden cross, two I ordinus. And then there was a three-cornered star shining so bright that no one could, three, two, ordinus, possibly look at it unless they had love in their eyes. And in the middle there was a four, three, ordinus, eye without an eyelid that could see anything, and I should think, but you see it could never go to sleep because there wasn't any eyelid. On the sides were written in re and taro, which mean many strange and beautiful things, and terrible things, too. I should think that anyone would be afraid to hurt anyone who wore that ring. It is all cut out of amethyst. And my fairy prince said, Whenever you want me, look into the ring and call me ever so softly by my name and kiss the ring and worship it, and then look ever so deep into it and I will come to you. So I made up this pretty poem to say every time I, in Cantio, woke up, for you see I am a very sleepy girl and dream ever so much about the other children, (laughs) and that is a pity because there is only one thing I love, and that is my fairy prince. So this is the poem I did to worship the ring. Part is in words and part is in pictures. You must pick out what the pictures mean, and then it all makes poetry. The Invocation of the Ring Adonai, thou inmost fire, self-glittering image of my soul, strong lover of thy bride's desire, call me and claim me and control. I pray thee keep the holy tryst within this ring of amethyst, for on mine eyes the golden sun hath dawned, my vigil slew the night. I saw the image of the one, I came from darkness into light. I pray thee keep the holy tryst within this ring of amethyst. I in R I me crucified, me slain, interred, arisen, inspire, terro me glorified, anointed fill with frenzied fire. I pray thee keep the holy tryst within this ring of amethyst. I eat my flesh, I drink my blood, I gird my loins, I journey far, for thou hast shown Ogdod, Ion, Kether, Calm Lie, Ether. I pray thee keep the holy tryst within this ring of amethyst. Prostrate I wait upon thy will, mine angel, for this grace of union. O let this sacrament distill thy conversation and communion. I pray thee keep the holy tryst within this ring of amethyst. I have not told you anything about myself, because it doesn't really matter. The only thing I want to tell you about is my fairy prince, 
But as I am telling you all this, I am seventeen years old, and very fair, and when you shut your eyes to look, but when you open them, I am really dark, with fair skin. I have ever such heaps of hair and big, big round eyes, always wondering at everything. Never mind, it's only a nuisance. I shall tell you, though, what happened one day when I said the poem to the ring. I wasn't really quite awake when I began, but as I said it, it got brighter and brighter, and when I came to Ring of Amethyst, Advenit Adonai Amethyst, the fifth time, there are five verses because my lover's name has five V's in it, he galloped across the beautiful green sunset, spurring the winged horse till the blood made all the sky turn rose red. So he caught me and set me on his horse, and I clung to his neck, and as we galloped into the night, then he told me he would like to take me to his palace and show me everything, and one day when we were married, I should be mistress of it all. Then I wanted to be married to him at once, and then I saw it, it couldn't be, because I was so sleepy and had bad dreams, and one can't be a good wife if one is always doing that sort of thing. But he said I would be older one day, and not sleep so much, and everyone slept a little. But the great thing was not to be lazy and contented with the dreams, so I mean to fight hard. By and by we came to a beautiful green palace with the strangest house you regnum spati ever saw. Round the big meadow there lay a wonderful snake with steel-green palantium ots plumes, and he had his tail in his mouth, and kept on eating and eating it, cheem, because there was nothing else for him to eat, and my fairy prince said that he, Draco, would go on like that till there was nothing left at all. Then I said it would get smaller and smaller and crush the meadow and the palace, and I think perhaps I began to cry, but my fairy prince said, don't be such a silly, and I wasn't old enough to understand all that it meant, but one day I should, and all I had to do was be as glad as glad, so he kissed me and we got off the horse and he took me to the door of the house and he went in. It was ceremonium, frightfully dark in the palace, and I felt tied so that I couldn't move, so I, zero degree equals zero degree, promised to myself to love him always, and he kissed me. It was dreadfully, dreadfully dark, though, but he said not to be afraid, silly, and it's getting lighter. Now keep straight forward, darling, and then he kissed me again and said, welcome to my palace. I will tell you all about how it was built, because it was the most beautiful palace that ever was. On the sunset side there were all the baths, and the bedrooms, Domus X, were all in front of us, as we were. The baths were all of pale olive-colored V-regnum marble, and the bedrooms had lemon-colored everything. Then there were V-porta, the kitchens on the sunrise side, and they were russet, like dead leaves and are in Loki Secundum, Autumn in One's Dreams. The place we had come through was perfectly black elementa, everything, and only used for offices and such things. There were most horrid things everywhere about, black beetles and cockroaches and goodness clip off, who knows what. But they can't hurt when the fairy prince is there. I think a little girl would be eaten, though, if she went in there alone. Then he said, Come on! This is only the servants' hall. Nearly everybody stays there all their lives. And I said, Kiss me! So he said, Every step you take is only possible when you say that. We came into a dreadful dark via v crooks passage again so narrow and low that it was like a dirty old tunnel and yet so vast and wide that everything in the whole world was contained in it we saw all the strange dreams and awful shapes of fear and really i don't know how we ever got through except that that prince called for some splendid strong creatures to guard us there was an eagle that flew and beat his cherubim wings and tore and bit at everything that came near and there was a lion that roared terribly and his breath was a flame and burn up all the things so that there was a great cloud and the rain fell gently and purely 
so that he really did the things good by fighting them. And then there was a bull that tossed them on his horns so that they changed into butterflies. And there was a man who kept telling everyone to be quiet and not make a noise. So we came at last in the next house of the palace. It was a great dome of violet, and in the center of the domus nine moon shone. She was a full moon, and yet she looked like a woman quite fundamentum, quite young. Yet her hair was silver and finer than spider's webs, and it rayed about her like one can't say what. It was all too beautiful. In the yod middle of the hall, there was a black stone pillar from the top, which sprang the membrum, a fountain of pearls. And as they fell upon the flood, they changed the dark sancti foderis marble to the color of blood and as it was like a green universe full of flowers and little children playing among them so i said shall we be married in this house and he said no this is only the house where the business is carried on all the palace rests upon this house but you are called lola because you are the key of delights many people stay here all their lives though i made him kiss me and as we went on to another passage via v dens opened out of the servants hall this passage was all fire and flames and full of coffins there was an angel blowing ever so hard on a trumpet and people getting up out of the coffins my fairy prince said most people never wake up for anything less so we went at the same time it was you see in dreams people can only be in one place at a time but that's the best of being awake through another passage which was lighted by the sun yet there were fairies via kaput dancing in a great green ring just as if it were night and there were two children playing by the wall and my fairy prince and i played as we went and he said the difference is that we are going through most people play without a purpose if we are traveling it is all right and play makes domus eight journey seem shorter then we came out into the third or eighth it v splendor depends which way you count them because there are ten house and that so was so splendid you can't imagine in the first place it was bright bright orange color and then it had flashes of light all over it going so fast that we couldn't see them and then there was the sound of the sea and one could look through into the deep and there was the ocean raging beneath one's feet and strong dolphins riding on it and crying aloud holy 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 in such an ecstasy that you couldn't think and rolling and playing for sheer joy it was all lighted by a tiny weeny shy little planet sparkling and silver and now and then a wave of fiery chariots filled with eager spearmen blazed through the sky and my fairy prince said isn't it all fine but i knew he didn't really mean it so he, i said kiss me and he kissed me and we went on he said good little girl there's many a one stays there all his life I forgot to say the whole place is just one mass of books and people reading them until they were so silly they didn't even know what they were doing. And there were cheats and doctors and thieves. I was really very glad to go away. Via. There were three ways into the seventh house, and the first was such a V-cranium funny way. We walked through a pool, each on the arm of a great big beetle, and then we found ourselves on a narrow winding path. There were many nasty jackals about, and they made such a noise, and at the end I could see two towers. Then there was the queerest moon you ever saw, only a quarter full. The shadows fell so strangely, one could only see the most mysterious shapes like great bats on women's faces, and blood dripping from their mouths, and creatures partly wolves and partly men, everything changing from one into the other. And we saw shadows like old, old, ugly women creeping about on sticks, and all of a sudden they would fly up into the air, shrieking the funniest kind of songs, and then suddenly one would come down flop, and you saw she was really quite young and ever so lovely, and she would have nothing on, and as you looked at her, she would crumble away like a biscuit. Then there was 
via V Hamas, another passage which was really too secret for anything. All I shall tell you is there is was the most beautiful goddess that ever was, and she was washing herself in a river of dew. And if you ask what she was doing, she says, I'm making thunderbolts. It was only starlight, and yet one could see quite clearly, so via V Os don't think I'm making a mistake. The third path is the most terrible passage. It's all a great war, and there's earthquakes and chariots of fire and all the castles breaking to pieces. I was glad when we came to the Green Palace. It was all built of malachite and emerald, and there was the loveliest Domus Seven, gentlest living, and I was married to my fairly prince there. And we had the V Victoria, most delicious honeymoon, and I had a beautiful baby. And then I remembered myself, but only just in time, and said, Kiss me! And he kissed me and said, My goodness. But that was a near thing that time. My little girl nearly went to sleep most. People who reach the seventh house stay there all of their lives, I can tell you. It did seem such a shame to go on. There was such a flashing green star to light it, and all the air was filled with amber-colored flames like kissed. And we could see through the floor, and there were terrible lions like furnaces for fury, and they all roared out, holy, 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 and leaped and danced for joy. And when I saw myself in the mirrors, the dome was one mass of beautiful green mirrors. I saw how serious I looked, and that I had to go on. I hoped the fairy prince would look serious, too, because it was the most dreadful business going beyond the seventh house, but he only looked the same as ever. But oh, how I kissed him, and how I clung to him, or I think I should never, never have had the courage to go up those dreadful passages, especially knowing what was at the end of them. And now I'm only a little girl, and I'm ever tired of writing, but I'll tell you all about the rest another time. Explicit capitulum primum vel del collegio externa. I was telling you how we started from the Green Palace. There are three passages that lead to the Treasure House of Gold, and all of them are very dreadful. One is called the Terror by Night, and another the Arrow by Day. And the third has a name that people are afraid to hear, so I won't say. But in the first, we came to a mighty throne of gray granite, shaped like the Via V Oculus, sweetest pussycat you ever saw, and set up on a desolate heath. It was the midnight and the devil came down and sat in the midst but my fairy prince whispered hush it is a great secret but his name is yeshua and he is the savior of the world and that is very funny because the girl next to me thought it was jesus christ tell another fairy prince my prince's brother whispered as he kissed her hush tell nobody ever that is satan and he is the savior of the world we were a very great company and i can't tell you all the strange things we did and said or of the song we sang as we danced face outward in a great circle of her closing in on the devil on the throne but whenever i saw a toad or a bat or some horrid insect my fairy prince always whispered it's the savior of the world and i saw that it was so we did all the most beautiful wicked things you can imagine and yet all the time we knew that they were good and right and must be done if we are ever to get to the house of gold so we enjoyed ourselves very much and ate the most extraordinary supper you can think of there were babies roasted whole and stuffed with pork sausages and olives and some of the girls cut off chops and steaks from their own bodies and gave them a beautiful white cook to a silver grill that were lighted with the gas of dead bodies and marshes he cooked them splendidly and we all enjoyed it immensely then there was a tame goat with a gold collar and went about laughing with everyone and he was all shaved in patches like a poodle we kissed him and petted him and it was lovely you must remember that i never let go of my fairy prince for a single instant or of course i should have been turned into a horrid black toad then there was another passage called the arrow by day and there was a sustentaculum most lovely lady all shining with the sun and the moon and the stars who was lighting a great bowl of water with one hand by dropping dew on it out of a cup and with the other she was putting out a terrible fire with a torch she had a red lion and a white eagle that she always had ever since she was a little girl 
She had found them in a nasty pit full of all kinds of filth, and they were very savage, but always treating them kindly. They had grown up faithful and good. This should be a lesson to all of us, never to be unkind to our pets. Pisces, my fairy prince, was laughing all the time in the third path. There was nobody there but an old gentleman who had but his bones on the outside and was trying ever so hard to cut down the grass with a scythe, but the faster he cut, the faster it grew. My fairy prince said, Everybody that ever was has come along this path, and yet only one has ever gotten to the end of it. But I saw a lot of people walking straight through as if they knew it quite well. He explained, though, that they were really only one, and if you walked through, that proved it. I thought that was silly, but he's much older and wiser than I am, so I said nothing. The truth is that it is a very difficult palace to talk about, and the further you get in, the harder it is to say what you mean, because it all has to be put into dream talk. And of course, the language of the wake world is silence. So, Dormus 6, so never mind, let me go on. We came by and by to the sixth house. I, Pulchurit Tudo, forgot to say that there were all those three paths were really one, because they all meant that things were different inside to outside, so people couldn't judge. It was fearfully interesting, but mind you, don't go into those passages without the fairy prince. And of course there's the veil. I don't think I'd better tell you about the veil. I'll only put your mouth to my head and your hand there. That'll tell anybody who knows that I've really been there, and it's all true that I'm telling you. Ceremonium. This is the sixth house. It's called the Treasure House of Gold. It's the most... 5 degree equals 6 degree, mysterious place as ever you were in. First there's a tiny, tiny, tiny doorway, humilitas, you must crawl through on your hands and knees, and even then I scraped ever such a lot of skin off my back. Then you have to be nailed on a red board with supplicium forearms with a great gold circle in the middle, and that hurt dreadfully. Then they make you swear the most solemn things you ever heard of, how you would be faithful to the fairy prince and live for nothing but to know him better and better, so the nails stopped hurting because, of course, I saw that I was really being married, and this was part of it, and I was glad as glad. And at that moment, my fairy prince put his hand on my head, and I tell you, honor bright, it was the more wake up than ever before, ever then, when he used to kiss me. After that, they said I could go into the bride chamber, but it was only the most curious room that ever was, with seven sides. There was a sepulchrum, dreadful red dragon on the floor, and all the sides were painted every color you can think of, with curious figures and pictures. The light was not like a dream light at all, it was a wake light, and it came through a beautiful rose in the ceiling. It, in the middle was a table, all covered with beautiful pictures and texts, and there was ever such strange things on it. There was a little crucifix in the middle, all of diamonds and emeralds and rubies and other precious stones, and there was a dagger with a golden handle and a cup full of the most delicious wine, and there was a curious coin with the strangest writing on it, and a funny little stick that was covered with flames like a rose tree is with roses. Beside the strange coin was a heavy iron chain, and I took it around and put it on my neck, because I was bound to my fairy prince, and I would never go about like other people till I found him again. And they took the dagger and dipped it in the cup and stabbed me all over to show that I was not afraid to be hurt, if only I could find my fairy prince. Then I took the crucifix and held it up to make more light in case he was somewhere in the dark corners, but no, yet I knew he was there somewhere. So I thought he must be in the box, for under the table was a great chest, and I was terribly pastros past trees. Sad, because I felt something dreadful was going to happen, and sure enough, Nostri CRC, when I had the courage, I asked them to open the box, and the same people that made me crawl through that horrid hole, and lost my fairy prince, and nailed me to the red board, took away the table and opened the box, and there was my fairy prince quite, quite dead. If you only knew how sorry I was... <laughs> 
But I had with me my walking stick with wings, and a shining sun at the top, Bacuum, which had been his, and I touched him on the breast to try to wake him, but it, I adepti, was no good. Only I seemed to hear his voice saying wonderful things, and it was quite certain he wasn't really dead. So I put the walking stick on his beast, and another th- little thing he had, which I had forgotten to tell you about. It was a kind of a cross with an oval handle that he had been very fond of, but I, Crooks and Sata, couldn't go away without something of his. So I took a shepherd's staff, and I pidd him at little whip with blood on it and jewels oozing from the blood if you know flagellum what i mean that they had put in his hands when they buried him then i o sidirus went away and cried and cried and cried but before i had gotten very far they called me back and the people who had been so stern were smiling and i saw they had taken the coffin out of the little room with the seven sides and the cur inter mortuus coffin was quite, quite empty. They had begun to tell us all about it, and I, vivum Pete, heard my fairly prince within the little room saying holy exalted things such as non est hic el, all the, as the stars trace in the sky as they travel in a car called millions of resurrected years. Then then they took me into this little room, and there was my fairy prince standing in the middle. So I knelt down as we all kissed his beautiful feet in the myriads of eyes like diamonds that were hidden in his feet laughed joy at us. One couldn't life one's head because he was too glorious to behold, but he spoke wonderful words like dying nightingales that have sorrowed for the fading of the roses and pressed themselves to death upon the thorns, and one's whole body became a single eye so that one saw as if the unborn, though of light, brooded over an eternal sea. Then was light as the lightning flashed Edvin at Elviax out of the east, even unto the west, and it was fashioned as the swiftness of a subtribus sword. Specibus, by and by, one rose up, then one seemed to be quite, quite dead and buried in the center of a pyramid of the most brilliant light it was possible to think of, and it was wake light too, and everybody knows that even wake darkness is really brighter than the dream light. So you must just guess what it was like. There was more than that, too, I can't possibly tell you. I know, too, what Inri on the ring meant, and I can't tell you that either, because the dream language has such a lot of important words missing. It's a very silly language, I think. By and by, I came to myself a little, and now I was really and truly married to the fairy prince, so I suppose we shall always be near each other now. Symbol Lahotos. There was the way out of the little room with the millions of changing shamalayanus colors, ever so beautiful, and it was lined with armed men waving their symbol Lagadius swords for joy, like flashes of lightning, and all about us glittering serpents, et serpents, danced and sang for joy. There was a winged horse ready for us when we came out on the slopes of the mountain. You see, the sixth house is really a mountain called Mount Abiginus. Only one doesn't see it because one goes through indoors all the way. There's one house you have to go outdoors to get to because no passage has ever been made. But I'll tell you about that afterwards. It's the third house. So we got on the horse and went away for our honeymoon. I shan't tell you a single word about the honeymoon explicit. Capitulum secundum vel del collegio ad SS porta collegi interne. Part 3. You mustn't suppose that the honeymoon is ever really over because it just isn't. But he said to me, Princess, you haven't been all over the palace yet. Your special house is the third, you know, because it's so convenient for the caput candidum second, where I usually live. King. The king my father lives in the first, he's never been seen, you know. He's very old, very, very old nowadays. I am practically regent, of course. You must never forget that I am really he. Only one generation, Eric.
feedback is not so far, and I entirely represent his thought. Soon, he whispered, ever so softly, you will be a mother. That will be a fairy prince again to run away with another pretty little sleepy head. Then I saw that when fairy arcana devia princes were really and truly married, they became fairy kings, and that I was a cult quite wrong ever to be ashamed of being only a little girl and afraid of spoiling his prospects because really you see he could never become king and have a son a fairy prince without me but one can only do that by getting to the third house and it's a dreadful journey i do most honestly assure you there are two passages one from the eighth house and one from the sixth and the first is all water and the second is almost worse because you have to balance yourself so carefully or you fall and hurt yourself to go through the first, you must be painted all over with blood, up to your vis-a-vis -vis aqua waist, and you cross your legs, and then they put a rope around one ankle and swing you off. I had such a pretty white petticoat on, and my prince said I looked just like a white pyramid with a huge red cross on the top of it, which made me ever so glad, because now I knew I should be the savior of the world, which is what one wants to be, isn't it? Only sometimes the world means all the other children in the dream, and sometimes the dream itself, and sometimes the wake things one sees before one is quite, quite awake. The prince tells me that really and truly only the first house where his father lived was really a wake house. All the others had a little sleep house about them, and the further you got, the more awake you were, and began to know just how much was dream and how much was wake. Then there was the other passage where there was a narrow edge of green vis-a-vis -vis pertica crystal, which was all you had to walk on, and there was a beautiful blue stimulant's feather balancing on its edge, and if you disturbed the feather there was a lady with a sword and she would cut off your head. So I didn't dare hardly to breathe, and all around there were thousands and thousands of beautiful people in green who danced and danced like anything, and at the end there was the terrible door of the fifth house, which is the royal armory, and when we, Dormus V, came in, the house was full of steel machinery, some red hot and some white vis-a-vis serveritas. Hot and din was simply fearful. So to get the noise out of my head, I took the little whip and whipped myself till all the blood poured down over everything, and I saw the whole house like a cataract of foaming blood rushing headlong from the flaming and scintillating star of fire that blazed and blazed in the candescent dome, and everything went red before my eyes, and a great flame like a strong wind blew through the house with a noise louder than any thunder could possibly be so that I couldn't hold myself hardly, and I took sh the sharp knives of the machines and cut myself all over, and the noise got louder and louder, and the flame burnt through and through me, so that I was very glad when my prince said, You wouldn't think it would, you, sweetheart? But there's lots and lots of people who stay here all their lives. There are three ways into the fourth house from below. The first passage, vis-a-vis -vis Manus, is a very curious place, all full of wheels and ever such strange creatures like monkeys and sphinxes and jackals climbing about them and trying to get to the top, and it was very silly because there wasn't really any way to the top of the wheel at all. The place you want to get to is in the center if you want to be quiet. Then there was a really lovely passage, like a deep wood in springtime, the dearest old vis-a-vis -vis Pugnus man who came along, who had lived there all his life because he was the guardian of it, and he didn't need to travel because he belonged to the first house really from the beginning. He wore a vast cloak and carried a lamp and a long stick, and he said that the cloak meant you were to be silent and not say anything you saw, and the lamp meant that you were to tell every tell everybody and make them glad and the stick was like a guide to tell you which to do but 
I didn't quite believe that because I am getting a grown-up girl now and I wasn't to be put off like that. I could see that the stick was really the measuring rod with which the whole palace was built and the lamp was the only light they had to build it by and the cloak was the abyss of darkness that covers it all up. That is why dream people never see beautiful things like I'm telling you about. All their houses are built out of common red bricks, and they sit on them and all day and play silly games with counters, and oh dear me, how they do cheat and quarrel. When anyone gets a million counters, he is no glad, you can't think, and goes away and tries to change some of the counters for things he really wants, and he can't. So you nearly die of laughing, though, of course, it would be dreadfully sad if it were wake life, but I was telling you about the ways to the fourth house, and the third way is full of lions, and a person might be afraid, only whenever one comes to bite at you, there is a lovely lady who puts her hands in its mouth and shuts it. So we went through quite safely, and I thought of Daniel in the lion's den. Domus four. The fourth house is the most wonderful of all I've ever seen. It is the V Savi Benignitas, most heavenly blue mansion. It is built of beryl and amethyst and lapis lazuli and turquoise and sapphire. The center of the floor is a pool of purest aquamarine, and it is water, only you can see every drop is a separate crystal, and the blue tinge filtering through the light. Above there hangs a calm yet mighty globe of deep sapphirine blue. Round it there were nine mirrors, and there is a noise that means when you understand it, joy, joy, joy. There are violet flames darting through the air, each one a little sob of a ratio nature, happy love. One began to see that the dream world was really for at last naturate. Every time anyone kissed anyone for real love, that was a little throb of violet flame in this beautiful house in the wake world. And we bathed and swam in the pool, and we were so happy you couldn't think. And they said, little girl, you must pay for the entertainment. I forgot to tell you that there was music like fountains to make as they rise and fall, only, of course, much more wonderful than adeptum that. So I asked what I must pay, and they said, You are now mistress of all, or potent rationas, these houses, from fourth to ninth. You have managed the servants' faculitatum hall very well enough since your marriage. Now you must manage the others' regnare. Because till you do, you can never go on to the third house. So I said, it seems to me that they are all in perfectly good order. But they took me up in the air, and then I saw that the outsides were horribly disfigured with great advertisements. And every singly house had written all over it, first house. This is his majesty's favorite residence. There is... No other genuine, beware of worthless imitations, come in here and spend life. Come in here and see the serpent eat its tail. So I was furious, as you might imagine, and had men go and put all the proper numbers on them, and a little sarcastic remark to make them ashamed, so they read, Fifth house, and mostly dream at that, seventh house, external splendor, and internal corruption, and so on, and on each one I put no thoroughfare from here to the first house, and only way is out of doors by order. Ladium quad, this is frightfully annoying, because in the old days we could walk omnibus vis about inside everywhere and not get wet if it rained, but nowadays there isn't custodet portas anywhere from the fourth to the third house. You could go, of course, by Ots Chim chariot from the fifth to the third, or through the house where the twins live from the sixth to the third, but that isn't allowed unless you have been to the fourth house too, and go from there at the same time. It was here that they told me what tarot on the ring meant. First it means no men gate, and then that is the name of my fairy prince. When you spell it in full letter, no men ad nigh to strive by letter. There 
are 78 parts to it, which makes it a perfect plan of the Carte Tarot, the whole palace, so you can always find your way. If you remember to say Egyptorium Tarot, then you remember Inri on the ring, too. Inri is short, equals LVX, which means the brilliance of the wide wake, wide, wide wake light, and that, too, is the name of my fairy prince, only spelled short. The Romans said it had 65 parts, which is 5 times 13, 78 is 6 times 13. To get to, into the wake world, you must know your 13 times table quite well. So if you take them both together, that makes 11 times 13. And then you say ag- abrahadabra, which is a most mysterious word, because it has 11 letters in it. You remember the houses are numbered both ways, so that the third house is called the eighth house. Two. And the fifth house, the sixth, and so on. But you can't tell what lovely things that means till you've been through them all and got to the very end. So when you look at the ring and see Inri and Hero on it, that means that it is like a policeman keeping on saying, Pass along, please. I would have liked to say in the fourth house all my life, but I began to see it was a just a little dream house, too. And I couldn't rest, because my own house was the very next one. But it's too awful to tell you how to get there. You want the most fearful lot of courage, and there's nobody to help you. Nobody at all, and there's no proper passage. But it's frightfully exciting, and you must wait till the next time before I tell you how I started on that horrible journey, (laughs) and if I ever got there or not. Explicit Capitulum Territorium Vel de Collegio Interno Tertium. Part 4. Now I shall tell you about the chariot race in the first passage. The chariot is vis-a-vis volum, all carved out of pure, clear amber, so that electric sparks fly about as the furs rub it. The whole cushions and rugs are all beautiful, soft, ermine fur. There is a canopy of bright blue with stars, like the sky in the dream world. And the chariot is drawn by two sphinxes, one black and one white. The charioteer is a most curious person. He is a great big crab in the most lovely glittering armor, and he can just drive his name in the most mysterious name I told you about with eleven letters in it, but be call him Jehu for short, because he's no man... 22, only 19 years old. It's important to know, though, because his journey is 22 times 19 equals 418, equals the most difficult of all, and without the chariot, one couldn't ever do it. Abrahadabra, because it is so far, much further than the heaven is from earth is in the dream world. Vis-a-vis Gladium, the passage where the twins live is very difficult, too. They are two sisters, and one is very pure and good, and the other is a horrid fast woman. But that just shows you how silly dream language is. Really, there is another way to put it. You can just say that they are two sisters, and one is very silly and ignorant, and the other has learned to know and enjoy. Now, when one is a princess, it is very important to have good manners, so you have to go into the passage and take one of them on each arm and go through with them singing and dancing, and if you hurt the feelings of either of them the least little bit in the world, it would show you were not really a great lady, only a dress lady, and there is a man with a bow and an arrow in the air, and he via K non S would fin- soon finish you <laughs> and you would never get out of the third house at all. Vagine. But the real serious difficulty is the outdoors. You have to leave the house Quinque of Love, as they call the fourth house. You are quite, quite naked. You must anime take off your husband clothes and your baby clothes 
and all your pleasure, clothes and your skin and your flesh and your bones, and every one of them must come right off. And then you must take off your feelings, clothes, and then your idea, clothes, and then what we call your tendency clothes, which you have always worn, and which make you what you are. After that, you take off your consciousness clothes, which you have always thought were your very own self, and you leap out into the cold abyss, and you can't think how lonely it is. There isn't any light, or any path, or anything to catch hold of to help you, and there isn't no fairy prince anymore, and you can't even hear his voice calling to you to come on. There is nothing to tell you which way to go, and you feel the most horrible sensation of falling away from everything that ever was. You've got no nothing at all, and you don't even know how awful it is. You would turn back if you could only stop falling, <laughs> but luckily you can't. So you fall and fall faster and faster, and I can't tell you anymore. <laughs> Domus 3. The third house is called the House of Sorrow. They gave me new V. Intellectio clothes of the queerest kind because one never thinks of them as one's own. A best egoitas clothes, but only as clothes. It is a house of utmost darkness. There is a pool ego est non ego of black solemn water in the shining obsidian, and one is like a vast veiled poor perium, figure of wonderful beauty brooding over the sea, and by and by the pains come upon one. I can't tell you anything about the pains, only they are different from any other pains, because they start from inside you, from a deeper partus, deeper, truer kind of you than you ever knew. By and by you see a tremendous blaze of a new sun in the sixth house and you are glad as glad as glad, and there are millions of trumpets blown and voices crying, Hail to the Fairy Prince, meaning the new one that you have had for your baby, and at that moment you find you are living in the first three houses all at once, for you feel the delight of your own dear prince, and his love, and the old king stirs in his silence in the first house, and thousands of millions of blessings shoot out like rays of light and everything is all harmony and beauty below and crowned about with the crown of twelve stars which is the only way you can put it into dream talk vita adepti now you don't need to struggle to go anymore because you know already that all the house is one palace and you move about in your own wake world just as it is necessary all the paths up to the second house, vis-a-vis -vis Clavicus, open the path of the Hierophant with the flaming star and the incense, vis-a-vis -vis Finestra, vast cathedral, and the path of the mighty ruler, who governs everything with his orb and his crown and his scepter. There is the path of the Queen of Love, vis-a-vis -vis Porta, which is more beautiful than anything, and along it might own dear lover passes to my bridal chamber. Then there are the three ways to the holy house of the old king, the way by which he is joined with the new fairy prince, where vis-a-vis -vis Camillus dwells, a moon-like virgin with an open book, and always, always reads beautiful words therein, smiling mysteriously through her shining veil, woven of sweet thoughts and pure kisses, and there is the way by which I always go to the king, my father, and that passage is built of thunder and lightning, but vis-a-vis -vis Domus there is a holy magician called Hermes, who takes me through so quickly that I arrive sometimes even at the very moment I, I start. Last of all is the most mysterious passage of them all, and if any of you saw it, you would think that there is vis-a-vis -vis Boss, which is a foolish man in it, being bitten by crocodiles and dogs, and carrying a sack with nothing any use in it at all. But really it is the man who meant 
to wake up and did wake up so that it is his house he is the old king himself and so are you so he wouldn't care what anyone thought he was really all the passages to the first three houses are very useful all of the dream world and the half dream world and the wake world are governed from these passages I began to see now how very unreal even the wake world is because there is just a little dream in it and the right world is wide 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 wake world my lover calls me little Lola wide awake not Lola daydream anymore but it is always Lola because I am the key of daylights I never told you about the first two houses and really you wouldn't understand but the second house is gray because the light and the dark flash by so quick it's all domus to v blended into one and it in it lives my lover and that's all i care about septiente the first house is so brilliant that you can't think and there too is my domus ivs lover i when all we are all one we wouldn't understand that either and the corona summa last thing i shall say is that one begins to see that there isn't really quite a wide 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 wake world till the serpent outside has finished eating up its tail and i don't really and truly understand that myself but it doesn't matter what you must do is first find the fairy prince to come and ride away with you so don't bother about the serpent yet that's all explicit obsculum in capitulum quarto vel de collegio sumo